Hi, welcome back to Play for Reborns. We have left Florida and we are at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture in Georgia. And guess what? If we're there, you guys are too, because of course we're taking you along with us. What is it? Keith, what's this? Corn shower. A what? Corn shower that pulls the husks off the corn. Corn, corn sheller. Okay. What is agriculture, guys? Um, we're getting ready to find that out as we walk around here. I'm going to say agriculture is growing, harvesting, and creating byproducts from livestock and harvest. Let's see if that's right. Buckboard. What do you do with that? Put your, put your, that's how they back oh, with the horses. Yeah. Yeah. Express wagon here. How? What makes it express? There's a kid's store here. Oh. <laughs> you hook up a goat or something to it for the kids. <laughs> Steam track wagon. Steam wagons. Tractors. <laughs> we got steam tractors. No plow. Yeah, we'll sit down here and have the horse or ox up in there. This is a break. And the water is lower than way down. Oh, I didn't show them um, Joshua. Joshua's second museum, guys. He's even got on his little museum bracelet like us. Sleeping through He's sleeping through this one too. Sleepy Joshua. He's got on this little Mickey Mouse outfit. Cut down, cut down a tree, hook the logs to that, and the horse will pull it. Oh, wow. I know you have business. I saw that on Alaska, that, that log wagon thing. I know, I wonder if Alaska moved. Yeah. I, this is a washing machine. Wow, that's big. Corn or maybe. maybe we probably got to read it on the other side. Black powder rifles. Black powder rifles. All right, let's keep it moving. We got to get to the next destination. Try to show as much as we can. That looks like something off of a movie. One of the first trucks. <laughs> Super cool. You got the old crank to start it. Oh, look at the little cranking wheel to start. Remember seeing that in the movies? Yeah, the Walton. Yeah, the Walton. You're right, the Walton. It's a pretty red tractor. 1959. Wow. It's a cotton scale. Oh, to weigh the cotton? They got to have a certain amount of it on the weigh scale or something? Don't know yet. Wow, look at all that cotton. And what's this? What's this? Cotton, cotton, cotton is processed with a gin. The first cotton gin was created by Eli Whitney in 1794. The original 1794 cotton gin worked a lot like a strainer. Cotton was run through a wooden drum embedded with a series of hooks that caught the fibers and dragged them through a mesh. The mesh was too fine to let the seeds through, but the hooks pulled the cotton fibers through with ease. At first, there were smaller gins that could be cranked by hand, then larger ones that could be powered by a horse and later by a steam engine. Today's cotton gin has changed very little since the 18th century version. However, the modern versions use blasts of air to remove the fibers and are powered by electricity instead of horses. Devices for removing trash, drying, moisturizing, fractioning fiber, sorting, and cleaning have been added. With these, hand crank machine could remove the seeds from 50 pounds of cotton in a single day. Today, modern cotton gins can de-seed up to 200,000 pounds of cotton. Cardboard Valley, store home. Cardboard Valley, yeah, what about them? This is the same thing with the cotton. Dang, that man look real. Yeah, like this is the same thing? Yeah, it's a cotton bale. Wow. I 
looked real for a second there. <laughs> there's products, there's fun facts. Uh, we're not gonna read, be able to read all of this, guys, but we'll give you a couple of fun facts. About 60% of the world's total cotton harvest is used to making clothing with the rest used in home furnishing and industrial products. One bale of cotton weighs about 480 pounds. The immature cotton flower bud is called a square. All right, guys, I'll put the camera up there if you want to stop it and pause it and you can um, finish reading it if you want to. And here's about the products. There we go. Give you a closer look at this guy because he, he almost, I really almost thought he was real for a second there. I was like, ah, he got to be tired of standing there. I can't even read that paper down there, but you can only guess that these um, clothing is definitely vintage. Looks almost like a wedding gown, right? Or what do you guys think? Or, or simply just a fancy one? True, oh, look at that little boy's outfit. That is too cute. Look at that quilt. How cute is that? This is the machine they use to make that? Wow. Wow. That is pretty. Well, this is the machine they use to make the fabrics, which they can piece together. So you think they made this handmade? That's probably hand sewn, but like the fabrics used in the quilt were oh, to be uh, woven together. They had to woven the fabric together and then prob probably either hand sewn or use this sewing machine, sewing yeah. machine to make, put the pieces together. Vintage iron board. Wow. So this museum is basically showing you how they made different foods and um, clothing and just things they use to make everyday living stuff, right? Everyday living and eating. And yeah, everything in this main area is yeah, harvesting. Harvesting. What are, what are these, shoe sizers? Yep, the shoe covers. So he's the shoe, oh, he's the shoe salesman. He makes people's shoes. Makes people's shoes. He probably fixes them too. Do you used to just love these kind of books? I used to love these kind of books. It says Georgia Eggs Hall of Fame over here. Wait, that's a stove? Yes, the Crawford Grand. Wow, look at that stuff. That's a beauty. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at the copper pot with it. That's a beautiful stove. When you look, is this a miniature one? Yes. So cute. Egg Hall of Fame, Georgia's Egg Industry Exhibit, Georgia's Egg. Wow. Oh, wow. egg production this area is telling you how they produce the how the eggs are produced and what happens after the chickens after the chickens lay the eggs right guys yeah okay what are you looking at up here yeah go ahead. 
Can you see it, Dorita? Yes. Okay, go ahead and when read I it. When I was eight years old, I would carry eggs in a paper sack and walk five miles to the country store. The man at the store would give me a nickel and an egg. My parents allowed me a treat. My favorite thing to do was buy an orange crush and candy bar. They, they cost a nickel. Is that the end of it? A Georgia egg producer. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for reading that for us. Yes. You see a waffle maker? Wow, yeah, look at all those cartons. Georgia was first to require eggs to be held at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less from time packaged until sold. To keep eggs fresh and to guard against bacteria, refrigerated eggs at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less, thoroughly cook eggs dishes to 160 degrees, discard cracked unclean shell eggs, store eggs in their original carton, keep cold foods cold, hot foods hot. Okay guys, you heard it here first. Keep your eggs cold. See, everybody don't think you have to keep the eggs cold, but I guess you really should. Yes, you need to keep the eggs cold. Wow. Look at that old grocery store. Look, boy, back when milk was five cents. Woo, one dozen eggs strictly eggs free with purchase each of bacon. Now, things are not that cheap anymore, guys. This was also during the I know, I know. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a range of ovens. All of these are ovens, right? Mm -hmm. Attached to the oven? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, we gotta look at that. So that doesn't lift up. It does lift up. Walker, waffle maker. Yeah. Kerosene. Mm -hmm. Kerosene and gas stoves. That's what these are, kerosene and gas stoves. And pressure cooker. Yeah, I noticed the pressure cooker. Not something I would want to have to work with. Because we all know you seen any of my cooking videos, you already know. And exactly why I have problems with that Instapot. <laughs> Hi, this is Jeannie. This is Thankful Friday. I'm thankful for, to go places like this. I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for my food and shelter and my siblings bye and of course we did not get through the whole georgia museum algae culture we did get through the the main parts of inside the building and the second half of the video you guys will see acres they have they just have acres and acres of all sorts of stuff so you guys will get to see some of that in the uh, second part of the georgia museum agriculture video thank you so much for watching us i am so sorry that this video went longer than our normal usual videos but it, there was just so much here to see thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video hashtag road trip Okay, what's wrong? With, okay, what's wrong with these barrels over here? Is that the bad turpentine? They don't use those? No, they're just making it. These are the uh, beginning process of all this stuff because there's a big bad turpentine right there.